Hey guys, it's Ethan. Today I wanted to talk to you about EFI Stub and how you can use it on Gentoo or any Linux distro actually to directly boot from your kernel instead of having a bootloader. This is what I personally like to use and I'd like to share with you the method that I use to, I guess, work with it. Now first things first, in your kernel you do need to enable these two features and we'll talk about the built-in kernel command line a little bit later. For now though, we're going to have assumed that you've already specified your kernel or in your kernel command line your boot partition or your root partition rather but I'll be going over the alternate method to this as part of this guide so let's do the regular way first assuming that's already in your kernel you've already specified we're going to want to first head into our actually it's better if I do this we're going to head into our boot partition so right here VDA1 is mounted on slash boot this is what we're trying to get into. We want our boot partition. It should be fresh. So we're going to head into our boot partition and I'm actually going to remove the EFI folder here. So inside of our boot partition is just our kernels. So you can see I have my main kernel here and my bin kernel right here. The first thing we want to do is make some directories. So let's make let's make dash p of course for multiple boot EFI and boot. This is where we're going to be moving our kernels. Once you've ran make install, your kernel would end up in here under these names and we're going to go ahead and copy them. So first we're going to copy our main kernel. So I'm going to copy this one to boot EFI boot boot x64.EFI. And now if I list this directory, there it is. This is my main kernel. And this is what we're going to be using for now. We'll be going over the bin in a second for other reasons. Now we need to make an entry. So we're going to go ahead and do as EFI boot MGR. This is the only package you need for this whole process. Dash C for create. Dash D for device. Slash dev VDA. That's our disk we just established up here. VDA. Dash P for partition. Now our boot partition is VDA1. It's not set on boot. So we're going to be specifying the first partition. Dash L is for label, capital L. We're going to call it Gen2. Dash L, lowercase, is going to specify loader. Now what's our loader? It's this dot EFI that we just copied. So we're going to do backslashes this time. Backslash, of course, because we've already, speci we've already specified where the boot partition is. It's a VDA1. That's the boot. So we're going to be specifying starting from boot, it's EFI, boot, boot x64.EFI, and close off that quote. Now, we've created the entry, so let's go ahead and reboot. And preface this by saying you should not reboot quite yet, because if you haven't specified your root or any of your special root flags in your kernel command line, this won't work. But in my case, I have, so let's go ahead. I'm going to press escape to get into my little VM's BIOS and we're going to boot into the entry that we just created called Gen2. And all went well and we've booted right into our system just like normal. Everything worked out. So now that we looked at how to install the main kernel, just a regular source based one where you've specified everything in the kernel. Now let's just let's look at how to install um, a binary kernel with this thing. We're even going to use an init ramfs, which I don't normally use. So first, let's emerge our bin kernel, and I'll come back when that's finished. So here we are. We just installed our kernel. So let's go ahead and just uh, dispatch dash conf like it's asking for. Yep. And now if we head into slash boot and we ls, we have our 5.9.1. That's our bin kernel. So let's do as cp we're going to go ahead and copy that to slash boot efi boot boot bin we're just specifying here which one it is you can name it whatever you want as long as it ends with a dot efi but now we need to make an entry for it so let's do as efi boot mgr dash c for create d for drive or disk vda dash p and we already specified it was the first partition so that's one dash l it's going to be gen2 dash bin or 
yeah and now we're going to do dash l for loader so backslash efi boot boot bin x64 dot efi and now here's the interesting part we have to specify a couple things after this okay so first of all we have an init ramfs and then we need to specify where our root is and on top of that we also need to specify some root flags so let's start dash u is what we're going to be using to specify these things so dash u and then in quotations init rd equals we're going to do that backslash again init ram fs dash 5.9.1 dot img and that basically just told us where the inner mfs was and now we're going to do root equals slash dev slash vda2 and our root flags equals sub vol equals slash gen2 that should be all we need here let's go ahead and remove the old one that i made and of course make a new one there we go now let's do a reboot and let's see if we can boot into this new bin kernel got into the boot manager we have gen2 bin right here it loaded the init rd from the command line it mounted everything and there we go we're in so if we head into the system i don't know if startx will work without installing drivers okay it does if we do a new name dash r we're on 5.9.1 there we are we're in the bin kernel so that's basically all you need to know about how to use efi boot manager it's a really cool tool because it allows you even if you can't get into your system uh, you can interact with the bootloader or fix some things up i've done this many times on other systems where we couldn't get into their system to actually specify a kernel or something was messed up so you just throw in a usb load up efi boot manager and you can make all the changes you need to so yeah i hope this was a helpful video for you guys i hope it was informative and maybe some of you will switch from a standard bootloader to just using efi boot manager with efi stub if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comments i'd be happy to answer any of them for you and with that being said thanks for watching i'll see you next time